Welcome to Thursday night Sunday school lesson with God's anointed hands. We are actually reviewing the lesson that was last Sunday's because we did this Sunday's last week. So we'll be coming from the topic of testing our faith is the title. Our devotional reading comes from Psalm 139, 13 through 18 and 23 through 34 or 24. Our background scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 11. And the printed passage and what we will be reading is 2 Corinthians the 13th chapter verses 5 through 11. Um, let me pray a sin and then we'll get ready to read and go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day, Lord. Lord, we are just so humble to be here, Lord, for a chance to let you feed us, Lord, for a chance for the word to get into us, Lord, so we can take it out into the world, Lord, for the opportunity just to let you teach us more about who you are and who you would have us to be, Lord. We thank you for this day that was created not for us, but given to us by you, Lord. You have been gracious in our night's sleep, Lord, to let our eyes open and walk into a day that you created, Lord, and you have blessed us to walk through it and make it back home. Lord, we pray for those who are traveling now, Lord, that they may have traveling mercies to where they are going. Lord, we pray for those that are not with us at this time, Lord, that if they join on, Lord, that they be blessed. And Lord, if they don't join on, they are still blessed by the same God. We just thank you, God, for being so gracious, so thoughtful, so kind, and truly so loving and sacrificial to us, Lord, the unfaithful ones, Lord, the ones that still don't look to you when we need to, Lord, the ones that still do what we want to at times. Lord, we thank you for being long-suffering, Lord, because if it wasn't, Lord, where would we be, Lord? We thank you for the salvation instead of wrath, Lord, and the opportunity to be in the kingdom and be co-heirs with with Jesus, Lord. We just thank you for being you and you alone, Lord. We thank you for your son that was the sacrifice of perfection, Lord, that went to the cross for our sins, Lord. And we thank you for the comfort that still resides and abides here with us, Lord. And he is our mark and our guarantee that you are coming back to take us home, Lord. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Would anybody like to read our printed passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 through 11? Okay. You want somebody to read them? Yep, you can read them. Okay. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know you be not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except ye be reprobate. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobate. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not yes. that we should appear approved, but that ye sh should do that which is honest, so we be as reprobate. You know, right? For we can do nothing against the truth but that the faith. For we are glad, or we are weak. And ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your protection. Mm -hmm. you know, therefore, I write these things being absent, these being present. I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord has given me to edification and not to destruction. So, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Amen. 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 As I said, the topic is called testing our faith. And just a background, a little bit of background, understand that Paul is not here with the Corinthians. He's actually writing to them. He's sending them a letter. And Paul is trying to get them right. There's some, it's not all of them, but it's some of them. So when he gets to verse five here, he says, examine yourselves. And I'm reading on the NIV. It says, examine, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Now, 
if you look at this just on the surface, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Didn't it say that faith without deeds is dead? So, so we know that there's going to be some examining and there's going to be a test. We have to be tested. We don't just get to walk in there because we say, oh, I got faith. Do we have dead faith or do we have life-sustaining faith? And then it says, do you not realize that Christ Jesus in you, is in you? This is an important part because if he's not... Your exam is going to be a failure. So, so Paul doesn't say look at everybody else. He says look at you. It does not say to look at someone else. But, but look at you. This is a self-examination. And what are you examining? To see if you are in the faith. And, and, and if you are in the faith, then there should be some things that show in you. And, and here is a look at your faith. Do you know who you are in your walk? And have you tested yourself and are you willing to be tested? Because there are some of us who don't like the test. We, we want the prize, but we don't want the test. We need to be tried, and it must be tried, and must be tried to make sure that we are pure. When, when he says, study to show thyself approved, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is an examination of self. Who did it say? Who, who else did it say to study? It didn't tell you to study for me. It said you study for you. Will you study? Look at yourself and ask: Do I study to show God that I am ready and willing, that I may be approved by Him? Do I make the effort because the Lord is looking for workmen? But. If you even read that passage, the Lord has a specific workman. He's not just looking for any workman. They can't be ashamed to be a disciple. And they must. Not they, they should or maybe they can, but they must know the word to be able to rightly divide the truth. If I don't know the word, how can I divide the word? How can I make it so people understand it and know the truth behind it? See, Paul was asked to prove himself at Corinth by doing what he said for them to do because they wanted to see if Paul's talk was his walk. Remember, they didn't like Paul much. Paul said, nope. I've done my own self-examination, so now you must examine yourselves because you need to prove if you are in faith. See, Paul did not need to be on display because he was led by the Holy Spirit. But, but you do because you move with the wind and let false apostles, apostles in the door and so on. So test yourself. Examine yourself. Paul says that Christ is in you and, and believe this. Paul believes that Christ is in them. Paul doesn't want them to have any faults. Paul's true fight is, I know that he is in you, so why are you doing the things that you are doing? But if you fail the test, then Understand he is not in you. Paul thought that they were good people. And he wanted the Corinthians to receive what Christ had in store for them. Isn't that what we all want to receive what Christ has in store for us? 
See, Paul never felt that Christ was not in the church in Corinth, but he does let them see it for themselves in their self-examination. Paul knew that they had the same reward that Jesus offered everyone. And that is salvation. Anybody want to read um, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13? Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. And stop at 11 right away. Okay, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. Keep going. Looking, yep. Looking for the blessing, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh oh. So, so when you when you look at this, the first thing Paul says in the first part is, everyone has the same thing. It says, "For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared." <laughs> To all men. It doesn't say that all going to get it. It doesn't say that all going to take it. But it is offered. It has appeared. To all men. But the, but the self-examination in the next verse here. Because having faith in the Lord teaches us. And when we are taught. We must examine what we know. And how we act. And it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness. Do we do that? Examine yourself. Worldly lusts. Living soberly, righteously, and godly. And in this world that we are in right now. That's a self-examination again. Do we have faith in us to deny the world. Because that's what Paul is saying. Get a better relationship with the Lord and leave the world alone. Faith in deeds, or in other words, prove to yourself that you do. Some of you may not be able to do this, and Paul knows this also. Because this message, although speaking to Corinth, it's not to the entire church. And part of it will get even more selective in who he's speaking to. But this test is on you and by you. Self-examination should let you know that Christ is in you. This is what the self-examination is truly supposed to pull out. And Paul is hoping you see this, that Christ is in you and not... The perfection of Christ. You're not going to be perfect. But his attributes should be seen in us. We may not have them all the time. We may not do right all the time. But boy, when people see us, they should be familiar with the fact that I can see Christ in them, even in their faults. See, when you are supposed to be marked by love, then they should see love. That's what Jesus said his disciples would be marked by his love. And if they don't see it, if they don't see love, then they are disqualified. But Paul does not believe that they are disqualified. Paul loves these people and he's encouraging them. 
So in, in verse 6, and he says, And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Paul is saying, you haven't failed the test or been disqualified. There may have been some among them that knew and had Jesus and passed the test for eternal salvation and some that did not. See, the ones that did not know Jesus could not blame it on the word unless they found Paul to be a wretch or unprincipled. And that was not Paul. So guess what? You can't blame it on Paul. Paul was a true believer in the Lord and he was the father to them. As far as their ministry in the gospel, when Paul brought this to them. So Paul is saying, recognize the true word of God. And the vessel that brings you the true word. Remember, they had false apostles. They had statues of Diana and all these things. But Paul is speaking to the body of Christ here. See, Paul understands and is going through his own tests and enduring and passing. And every believer in Corinth, they're going to have to do the same. Paul was thrown over a wall. Paul was beaten in prison. All of his tests. And Paul passed. But the, the thing that Paul is telling him, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus and know for yourself that Jesus is present in your life. See, some of them did not want to repent and now Paul flips the switch on them and says, test yourselves. You can see for yourself. Don't test me. Test yourself. Remember, sawdust in the eye with the plank in yours. Maybe you need to get the sawdust out of yours first. So test yourself and get your sawdust cleaned up. And then maybe you can help me. So don't worry about being better than someone else. It's another message that you get from this. Don't worry about being better than someone else. Somebody always tells us we got the wrong look. We got this. We got that wrong, that wrong. The person I'm worrying about being better than is the person I was yesterday. Every day we should strive to improve and be closer to the ways of Christ. I don't care how you look. I don't care how much money you have. I got to be more Christ-like. I got to increase my walk with Christ. I got to have more faith in Christ. I got to love more of his people. So if I missed one yesterday, I better get two more today. So as Paul walks him through this, Paul says, I'm going to say a prayer for y'all. Verse 7, he says, Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. First and foremost, Paul says that I pray that you do no evil. And this is a prayer from Paul. The, the facet that Paul is praying is to not use his ability through Christ. Because Paul could come get him. And there could be some repercussions. Paul has the ability to punish them for their ways. And, and this truly falls back on verse 6 because you should want to be with the Lord and stop doing evil. Or they could see the Lord could punish the disobedient. Paul would be the vessel to inflict the punishment even and give out the discipline. But he says in his prayer that he does not want that to happen. 
Paul would rather be considered a false prophet and not even be able to say that he could do that by considering them enemies and having him use what the Lord supplies him. Paul doesn't want to come at them in a harsh way. He doesn't want to rebuke them. He said, I'd rather show a different way so I don't have to do this. Then he goes on and says, I don't want you to see that so that you can say that I passed the examination or test, but that you see that you should live good and honest lives no matter who I am. Your test is not on how I live, it's how you live. Paul says then, that even if I be rejected and not of value to you, because remember, they liked the false apostles and Paul didn't fit the image of an apostle to them. He said, I'll take all of that if you become disciples than to make me use what the Lord has given me. And that's the, the part that Paul could inflict on them. This prayer is a plea for the betterment of them. And as Paul continues, he really is saying that my greatest desire is for you to walk with Christ and accept the calling. And no matter how you see me, the true one to look to is the Lord. Paul is asking for a better you so that he does not have to punish them. Paul did not want to build his character up. This ain't a bragging thing for Paul. This ain't nothing that makes Paul greater. He didn't want to do anything to take advantage of a bad situation. Paul wanted them to get right. Okay. He wanted to improve their situation. If you ever get somebody that comes to you and they don't improve your situation you would think they're trying to harm you. Paul was saying, no, I want you to get better. But if I have to look a certain way for you to get better, I'll do that. But there's another thing you got to understand. Punishment does happen. Punishment does happen. So, in verse 8, it says, For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. So Paul is talking about him and his traveling group, and he says, We can't preach any false doctrines because we belong to and are influenced by the Holy Spirit. You've heard false doctrine, you've seen false prophets, but we cannot. Go against the truth because we are led by the truth. He's influenced by the Holy Spirit so we can only bring the truth. And Paul came to them with the gospel and that is the true gospel. This wasn't some made up gospel. This was one that was given to him. And that is all that he could deliver to them because he was not led by what was in it for him. Paul was led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Paul wasn't getting any kind of extra pay and you weren't paying him anything extra. Paul preached the word for the love of God. But what the Lord had in store for them is what Paul preached the gospel for. You, you can look at me all day. I might not say what you want to hear, but the word of God, the true word of God, if it comes from me, it's still a benefit from the Lord. And then he, he goes, see the punishment that could be bestowed amongst the Corinthians could also be spared by hearing the truth and living by the truth. Y'all know salvation on one side, wrath on the other. 
Anybody want to read Luke chapter 10, verses 16 and 17? Yes, ma'am, verses 16 and 17. You see that? And what did they do? They spoke the truth when they went out. If you speak in the word of God, if they listen to it, they listen to him. But if they reject him, they reject him. And Paul is saying, I'm speaking the truth to you. I'm praying for you. Get right. See, Paul was appointed and led with an apostle's position. And when they heard Paul, they were hearing the truth and Paul knew that and wanted them to know that. Paul was on a mission and it was for the Lord and he would sacrifice self to bring others into the light. He would rather love them than bring punishment on them. Nobody wants to start a church off and bring punishment to it. So Paul goes and now we are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is that you may be fully restored. See, Paul was so willing for them to examine themselves and to see Christ that if he had to be weak to benefit them, that it would make him glad if he is weak. And if they are strong, it didn't matter to Paul in any way or form from looking poor to doing work because the apostle was set to be that way. That's how we are set up. If you look at first Corinthians chapter four, verses nine through 12, and I got it up for, it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our hands when we are cursed, we bless, and when we are persecuted, we endure it. We don't have a problem with being weak. Because when we get weak, we know who got the true strength. But the display that we give to the world, if it helps them come to Christ, then be weak. And Paul says, I'll be that. See, Paul knew that we are to be weak if it will help you be strong. And the Lord is looking for that. This isn't something we don't know. The word tells us that. Our true strength is when you see us doing the Lord's work. And if us being humble will turn you to a relationship with the Lord, then guess what we better be doing? See, Paul was working at making them understand that to be with Christ is the best place and the only place that they should be. And Paul wanted them fully restored no matter the cost. Our embarrassment in this world, our shame to this world, if it brings somebody to Christ, it is not embarrassment nor shame. And any time that we work for the Father to bring a soul to him, 
If the angels rejoice, why would we find shame in it? See, they, they had received many gifts and blessings, but Paul was looking for their strength here. He is talking to the group that is not. And, and, and I don't want you to think he's talking to the whole congregation. Right now, he is talking to the group that is not going to the Lord. Paul would give up all of the power that is bestowed upon him and be thought of as weak to bring you to Christ. The group that he speaks to is the group when added to the rest has the perfection of the lost group. They are the missing sheep that he must go after. There are the sheep that are there in Corinth and then there are the sheep that are the lost ones. And please understand that this conversation is not for the entire group. So understand that parts have fallen, but not the whole. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10 says, Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. See, the, the group that Paul is speaking to and praying for is lacking in their faith and is job is to give them what they need to be restored. But remember that we also, as Paul, must pray for restoration. We don't go in there and say we're doing this on our own. So Paul says, since I'm telling you all these things, then know this. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. See, the Lord gave Paul authority. He gave him authority to build up the church. The Lord didn't want Paul to tear him down. Paul's authority that he truly wanted to use was building them up and never tearing them down. Even if it meant Paul had to sacrifice who he was. Paul does not want to rebuke them and will do anything to get them right so that he does not have to, as stated in verse 9. Paul is truly desiring what Jesus said about knowing his disciples by their love. And Paul wants this church to understand love and to be a church of loving people. Okay. See, Paul was not there with them at the time, and that is why he writes, but he has plans to see them, but he does not want to see them and be harsh, but loving. He's saying, get right before I get there, because I want to use what the Lord has given me to lift the church up. I want to share the word of God with you. I want to increase your faith. I want to bless you and pray for you. I want to spiritually love on you. But if you ain't right, I got the authority to do some other things. But Paul doesn't want to rebuke them. Paul is praying and begging them to get right. So in verse 11, he goes, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. See, Paul has been pretty harsh and pretty blunt with the Corinthians. And maybe a disciplinarian if, you, if you're listening to his statements to him because Paul ain't pulling no punches but he, he ends it when he says rejoice and rejoice comes in the fact of the full restoration and of having a right relationship with the Lord you don't have to think anything of me but boy I'm going to rejoice if you thinking less of me brings you to the Lord and restores you 
He says, encourage one another to get right and stay right. And we all should still practice that to this day. We shouldn't want anybody to fall. He says, get on one accord and living in peace is truly to live in love. And this peace will stop all of the hostilities amongst them. And since they will be gathered in love and peace in the Lord's name, then he will be there. But understand also, if there is no peace, then know who also is there. That self-examination lets you see Christ in you, so you should be able to get with your brothers and sisters and rejoice in the Lord and pray for everybody's full restoration to God so that the part of the church, the sheep that are lost can come into the fold and increase the fold. And Paul wants him to have peace because he knows what being on one accord is. And when he says that, right after he says, and live in peace, and then he says, in the God of love and peace. There's only one God of love and peace. I don't care about Valentine's Day or whatever they say for these other days. There's only one God and the God of love and peace will be with you. That means we have been fully restored. And that's what Paul is telling them from the self-examination on down to get right with God for yourself. Because if you write with God, you can add to the body. But if you ain't right with God, you can't even be in the body. So remember, nothing wrong with testing our faith. We all should be looking for tests. How do we get better? You took a test in school. You took a test to drive. You take a test at work. You take a test even the Get your passport. You got to fill out all that information. <laughs> if you got to do all of this for a test, why wouldn't you think you would have a test for the most important thing? Your relationship with the Lord. Y y your mouth may say one thing, but is your spirit saying another thing? So we got to get right with the Lord. And Paul is telling you, I will do whatever it takes. If you need me to look weak, I'll look weak. But I will not be the one that deters you away from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Uh, you know, you have to understand that. But Paul, when Paul was teaching, he said he, he didn't come with no fancy words. He came to it with real understanding. That I want you to have what I got. I, I want you to have the same level of faith in God that I have. Amen. I, I really do it. I really do it. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I, I got to apologize a little bit because this is actually last week's lesson and this week's you already got, but um, I don't be mad at myself too much because it still be teaching me some new stuff, giving me some new information, opening my eyes to something new. And I take that anytime. But we do have to look at ourselves. We, we look at everybody else and forget to... As uh, Michael Jackson used to say, and I, I remember reading that song, he say, look at the man in the mirror. Uh -huh. And and people didn't pay attention to it because it was just a song, but Michael Jackson was saying, you look at you. Part of the problem might be you. You might be falling down when you should be calling on the Lord. You might be causing tension in the body of Christ because you don't call on the Lord. And you ain't tried to increase your faith. You have accepted Christ. But that's all you did. You didn't do any of the other things he said to do. You just said, I believe. But he got some work in that belief. There's some actions that have to be done. And people have to see Christ in you. Or how do they know to go to him? There ain't nobody invisible walking behind you saying, oh, they believe in Christ. Go to Christ. No, they got to see Christ in you. That's why, that's why we got the Holy Spirit so we can have those attributes. And Paul, as Pastor just said, Paul knew. He had them. You have to have them. But that's all I got tonight. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Stevens, you want to um, pray us out? Father God, we thank you for this lesson tonight. Father God, we thank you for allowing us an opportunity to do self-examination. Yes. Father God, we pray that you allow us to walk in that word as well as in that way. In order to abide in that will. Father God, as we depart from this life and from your presence, we ask you to keep your arm of protection around us. So much is going on, Father God. We ask you to put our arm of protection around us. Don't let any hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. Father, we ask you to bless our members and homes. We ask you to bless our beloved ones. We ask you to bless our family and friends. And Father, we ask you to bless our enemies. Father God, keep us in the hall of our hand. And then, Father, we pray that you give us a night of comfort and ease at night. Uh, death angels going to and fro. We pray that you will not allow him to bring us any hurt, harm, or danger. And Father God, we pray that it's your will that you wake us up in the morning. You start us on another day journey. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. The one God, we give you the praise. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.